Well, there are two big skills that I want to cover in 3.3, and the first is long division. And you probably remember long division from elementary school. Um, you might have, I know I learned the mnemonic device um, does McDonald's oops, sell cheeseburgers. Right, because I would take my steps and I would divide. So four goes into one zero times, four goes into 11 what, twice. I would multiply, so four times two is eight, and then I would subtract. So eight, 11 minus eight is three. I would check, do I have anything else to work with? Yes, I do. And then I would bring down the next number and then repeat the process. So I have a nine, 36, one, I have nothing else to work with, and I would say 29 remainder one. If we go back to my division algorithm, this tells me that I can write 117 as four times 29 plus one. And that's where that division algorithm's coming in. My process for long, uh, for long division of polynomials is identical, except what I'm gonna do is every time I divide, I'm really gonna just look at the first term in my divisor going into the first term here. So if I were to divide three x cubed by x, I'm gonna be left with three x squared. Um, actually, I'm gonna backtrack for a second. One thing I should even do before I start this, I just move this out of the way. You notice that I'm missing an, um, a linear term, right? I'm missing something times x. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it over and we wanna account for this missing linear term. So we're gonna call it zero x, just as a placeholder and it's just to organize my work, but it's something I really recommend doing, um, especially when multiple terms begin to mi start missing. It's, it's something that's really easy to catch or to miss if you're not looking for it. Back to the normal work. I'm gonna take x into three x cubed. I'm left with three x squared. So now I'm gonna multiply. Well, three x squared times x is three x cubed. Three x squared times two is six x squared. I'm going to subtract. So three minus three is zero. Um, negative four minus six is negative 10. And I'm gonna bring down my next term. I like to bring down the zeros, again, to keep organized. There's some people that don't I think it's easier to stay organized. So again, does x go in to negative 10x squared? Yes, it does. How many times? Uh, negative 10x. So multiply negative 10x squared minus 20x. We're gonna subtract. I've got positive 20x. I'm gonna bring down the four. And again, I'm gonna ask myself the same question. Does x go into 20x? Yes, it does. How many times? 20 times, plus 20. I'm gonna multiply 20x plus 40. I'm gonna subtract, and I get negative 36. So I have a remainder of 36. If you remember back to our numerical example, another way that you learned how to write the remainder is to write it as a fraction over the thing you're dividing by. We can do the same thing with polynomials. I can take my remainder and write it as a fraction over the thing I'm dividing by. So I have negative 36 over x plus two. And now here is my entire final answer, this entire bit right here. And again, if I wanted to express this with the division algorithm just to show it in motion, I could say that that entire polynomial can be written as x plus two times my quotient, which is the part without the remainder, plus, I guess minus in this case, right? Minus the remainder. And if I were to FOIL this out, I'd get back to where I started. That's kind of the whole point behind this. Um, that whole division algorithm. But nine times out of 10, I'm gonna be looking for this answer up here up top. Quotient plus the remainder as a fraction. I'd rather you show it to me that way. I think for me, it makes a lot more sense.
um, and it's what's typically accepted as well. Well, fortunately, we have a shortcut because this is tedious. Um, it just sucked up probably a good five minutes of my video. Um, well, we've got synthetic division, but there's a catch. Synthetic division only works with linear divisors. Only if I'm dividing by something that is linear. So this, good. If it were x squared plus 2, couldn't do it. I would need to do it by long division. Um, so here's how it works. We're going to set up this box. And we're going to look at just my coefficients. Oh, this is, I want to change this. I wanted this to be the same exact example that we did up top. So I'm going to line up all of my coefficients. And I should have one more term for the degree I have. So if I have third degree, I should have four terms here. And that's because, if you look again, notice that I'm missing a linear term. So I need to add this back in also. And this way, now I can list out my, my coefficients. I've got 3, negative 4, 0, and 4. And how do I know what I'm dividing by? Well, I'm dividing by whatever this is, but whatever the 0 would be. So if this were a factor, assuming it's a factor, it's 0 is negative 2. So I'm actually going to put a negative 2 out front. I'm effectively just switching the sign of whatever I see. And with synthetic division, we're actually kind of sort of doing things in reverse compared to long division. So I'm actually going to start by bringing down my first coefficient. Every time I move diagonally, I'll uh, move it like, I'll just draw it in like this. I'm going to multiply. So anytime I move diagonally, I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by whatever I'm dividing by. So I'm multiplying by this negative 2. So I get negative 6. And then anytime I move vertically, anytime I move vertically, I'm going to add. So negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. And then I'm just going to repeat the process all over again. I'm going to multiply. I get 20. I'm going to add. I get 20. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to add. To write this as a quotient, we're just going to insert powers starting one lower than what I, the degree I started with. So if I'm starting with degree 3, then the degree of my quotient has to be 2. If I'm starting degree 5, my quotient is going to be degree 4. It's always one less. And then, of course, I can still account for my remainder by writing it in the same way that I did for long division. 36, or sorry, negative 36 over whatever I'm dividing by. I can still do it that way, which is nice. So as you can see, this is a much quicker way to do things, especially when I'm not just talking through the problem and I just do it. It takes considerably less time, and that's convenient, but it only works with linear divisors. And we'll talk about some tricks that we can use to work around that a little bit later. Um, but one kind of big problem that I want to look at is this one on the side here. Show that x minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial that I gave you, hence fully factor the polynomial. Well, let's use our factor theorem, right? If something is a factor, something is a factor, I should be able to divide by that factor and end up with 0. So let's, let's see that this works. If I'm dividing by x minus 1, I'm going to put a 1 outside the box. I'm going to line up all of my coefficients. I can see that I'm not missing any terms. Bring down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. I get a 0. So I can say, therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. And my quotient, just so I know, is x squared plus 3x minus 4. I want to, my goal is to fully factor this. So let's factor this. Factors of 4 that add up to 3, different signs. So I'm going to have x plus 4, x minus 1. Yeah, all right. So now my fully factored uh, version, 
simple factorization is x minus 1, because we knew that that was a factor earlier. And then I've got my x plus 4 times x minus 1. And I guess if I wanted to condense this further, because I can this time, normally maybe I can't always, but I have 2x minus 1s. So x minus 1 squared times x plus 4. Uh, we can actually do a lot with long and synthetic, long and synthetic division. Um, I think we're going to spend some more time beyond just tomorrow or the next class uh, working on this. But um, this is, I guess, just enough to get us started. Long and synthetic division.